Good afternoon. Um, it is a great privilege for me to introduce Bishop Basil of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate uh, of Antioch, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And he is the Metropolitan of the Diocese of Wichita in Mid America. And uh, to get a better idea of uh, who he is, we'll ask uh, Bishop Basil himself a few questions so that we will all get to know um, exactly who he is and what he does. Bishop Basil. Uh, Bishop Basil, can you just explain uh, briefly um, who you are, okay. what church you belong to, and uh, what your responsibilities are within that church? Okay. I am of Syrian extraction, um, but I was born in America. My parents were born in America. My grandparents came from Syria at the turn of the 20th century. I was raised Orthodox, um, of Greek Orthodox faith of the Patriarchate of Antioch, uh, which is one of the Eastern Orthodox churches, like the Church of Russia, the Church of Greece, the Church of Romania, etc., etc. The Church of Antioch is the uh, third in precedence, the first being Constantinople, the second being Alexandria, and the third being Antioch. I was a, ordained a priest in 1980 and served as a priest at St. George Cathedral in Wichita, Kansas in the United States from 1987 until my consecration as bishop in 1992, uh, which is 20 years I've been a bishop. Uh, I was elected and enthroned as the bishop of the city of Wichita, Kansas, which is directly in the center of the United States and the Diocese of Mid-America. It encompasses the 11 Great Plains states of the United States. Included in that diocese are 52 parishes and missions. And it goes from the Mexican border in the south to the Canadian border in the north. So it's a very large geographic diocese. See. And um, did you have any previous experience with uh, Indian Orthodoxy or members of the Indian Orthodox Church or was it after um, you came to Wichita that uh, you first experienced the uh, members of the Indian Orthodox Church? You know as a bishop I visited and I was on the board of trustees at St. Tikhon Seminary when there were a number of Indian seminarians studying there. I am an alumnus of St. Vladimir's Seminary so as a bishop had occasion to visit St. Vladimir's and met many of the Indian seminarians at St. Vladimir's as well. But on a personal relationship really to get to know an Indian Orthodox individual, uh, there was a wonderful young man who moved to Wichita from one of the parishes, the Indian parishes in Dallas, Texas, uh, Amit Alex, um, who's a very dear spiritual son and friend and is very active in the Orthodox community there both in Wichita and at the St. Gregorius Church, the Indian Church in Kansas City. So that was my initial contact with an Indian Orthodox. And now uh, what are your opinions of the Indian Orthodox Church now that you've been here and experienced firsthand uh, what Orthodoxy is in India and it's something that um, a lot of the communities outside of India do not necessarily know about, that there is a church, there's an Orthodox tradition in India. So what have you seen? Anything that you can just shed um, just a little, some little light on? I was very touched by, uh, emotionally touched by, and spiritually touched by the piety of the people. Uh, an authentic Orthodox piety uh, that's been maintained here now since the days of the Apostle Thomas when he first came. Uh, one that's identifiably Orthodox, not just Christian in a generic sense, but a piety that's generic, that is identifiably Orthodox. The same piety you find among Orthodox Christians in Syria, in Lebanon, in Greece, in Romania, in Russia, in Ethiopia. Um, and for being a church that's an, a, a minority in a sea of uh, non-Christian believers here in India that speaks very well of the leadership of the church here that's been able to maintain really a pure authentic orthodox spirituality and piety 
I was very touched by the number of young people that I saw in the churches. Uh, young men and young women, university students, young parents, children. Um, it's a living church um, and a vibrant church. I mean, the participation of the laity in the divine services, the chanting of the divine services is done with uh, gusto and enthusiasm. Um, I've been very, very impressed and very humbled, really very humbled. You know, we Orthodox in the West oftentimes um, think we are the best. I'm going to be very honest. We just think that in, in, in the West. And it's not just Orthodox, it's many people in the West uh, that we have a lot to teach other people and not much to learn. Uh, but the more one visits, especially Orthodox countries and Orthodox churches around the world, you find that we in the West have a lot to learn. Um, we share the same faith, thanks to God. Um, but we have a lot to learn. We're babies compared to 2,000 years of Christianity here in India. Uh, the Orthodox have been in the United States maybe 200, 250 years. Um, you have doors at churches that are older than 250 years old. So it's a very positive impression. As I said, I'm very humbled by what I found here. Uh, Bishop Basil, do you have any uh, greetings for the new year? Um, you want to give to the Manager Orthodox uh, Church community and in particular you want to say any vision that you may have for them uh, that you, know, you may want to share with them? You know, really coming from the West and uh, being a first time visitor to, to the country of India and to the Indian Orthodox Church in particular, um, I need to be very careful so that I don't seem presumptuous. You know, really, as I said, I've been very humbled by, by my visit here and what I've found in the church. But of course, w we wish peace, peace for all peoples of the world. And for the church here in India, I pray that you remain faithful. Really remain faithful to the heritage that is yours um, from the Apostle Thomas. You didn't receive it from some missionaries that came from the West but you are authentically people of this land, authentically Christians of this land, uh, the people who have the, great per the pearl of great price, which is the true faith. Um, I laud you for preserving that and passing it on to the new generation, and I ask that the new generation be strengthened and uh, convinced that what they possess is beyond value not to be tempted by anything else, but to preserve their holy orthodox faith and to love the Lord your God with all your strength, all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. A very happy and a blessed new year.